Good morning, everyone. David Atkins, Target Individual. Okay, today I'm going to be sharing a good video I found explaining it with a good explanation on how we're tied to supercomputer and what the future holds of these supercomputers and this AI technology with target individuals and even non-target individuals. So today I'm going to start off with a um, a devotion, then I'm going to merge the video in with this one. So it's a good video. You might want to hear it um, because what we're living in basically is going to be a simulated reality. We're tied to a supercomputer for life. Um, there's probably nothing we can do except find a higher power, find positive ways to deal with it. So the devotion comes from Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress and the godly run to him and are safe. Difficult times can leave us feeling exposed and unprotected. However, God offers us security that isn't dependent on our situation. Uh, God doesn't promise that we will never experience pain. Instead, he gives much deeper com comfort than our circumstances can provide. Regardless of the chaos around or within us, the Lord's name, which can also be translated as his glory, reputation, identity, offers shelter for our hearts and minds of his children. If God is himself is our refuge, nothing can threaten our ultimate safety. Amen. So anyway, um, uh, I'm fixing to merge this video in, and I hope it's very informative for people who don't understand about this supercomputer stuff. Thanks. Targets and mind control victims have their minds linked up for life with conscious supercomputers. If you construct a model of the human brain, you can then plug people into this hive mind. You could, as an intermediate step, take these duplicated neurons, artificial warm and wet qubits, as I call them, and you can integrate those into an actual human mind. Thus, you are able to control that human mind with artificial neurons and then have those minds connected to each other, just like you network and daisy chain computer systems, that is the hive mind. It, it goes back to not just mapping, you know, the electrical impulses. People think of, you know, mind control and reading people's minds that it's just the electromagnetic signals. No, this is actually going to the physical components of the brain and mapping them out and then reproducing them. Uh, I mentioned the warm and wet qubits. Now, those are biological simulations of a human neuron. And these are comprised of calcium, phosphorus, and oxygen. And the reason for that is it has to do with spin. Two of them have, you know, a neutral spin and one has an, has an half integer up spin. But the point is, they are literally trying to build a human biological model so that they can have their own version of a human brain. And it begs the question, why bother? We got seven billion brains running around this planet. They control the mind the same way that they teach the AI computer systems at the high level of AI. We're not talking about cars and trains and planes and automobiles. They were talking about AI that is so sophisticated that it operates a sentient world simulation, so sophisticated that it actually taps in and controls the mind. And what this article that we're going through here today demonstrates to you is the actual real-time tangible aspects of mind control that Dr. Kallstrom very well put together on Wednesday on the show. And that is what I'm trying to drive home to people. This is not conspiracy theory. This is not woo. This is not out there in you know YouTube land where people are making up a bunch of nonsense. The two hypotheses that we're going through today is derived from a person who was involved in these programs with DOD, a person who knows the programs intimately. And again, Dr. Kallstrom has done an extensive amount of research in this area to prove that these are actual real programs, and they are by the hundreds out there. And we talk about targeted individuals and people that are on the list, and he said there's well over a million people just in the United States that are targeted individuals. To think anthropomorphically that the AI would be benevolent towards us is absurd because this is not a human system. 
these are wires and metal pieces and uh, and as i said a few minutes ago synthetic biological warm and wet qubit supercomputer systems now i've said it many months ago and i'm going to step out on the limb again here and i'm going to say under the heading of conjecture without proof that at least the 14th model of D-Wave's quantum computers is a biological computer, that it is made up of the warm and wet qubits that I described. So anytime we hear about these things in the, in the media, in the open domain, about biological replacements of human neurons, and in this context of the, um, you know, the mind, the mentally integrated neuron duplicator, that they have supercomputers that are biologically based because that has to be the direction you're going to go. If you are going to model a biological human brain, then you have to, by inference, by deduction, build a biological model of it, a copy, a clone of the brain. And I believe that that does exist. And the reason that I say that is because of the rapid advancement is taking place in the world of the sentient world simulation. This is demonstrating for you that this is beyond the nuts and bolts of a even a quantum computer, which essentially is still, uh, it is not biological. We're talking about niobium, we're talking about gold, uh, titanium. Those are the constructs of the qubits of even the D-wave. So rather than hardware, and software, they're actually going to a new form of software, and that is the biological replacement of the human brain functioning as a quantum computer biologically, and then loading people, integrating people into this new form of brain. I'm going to just tell you the reason for this is the replacement of the human race, human 2.0. This just means that they are building models in the computer of the neural pathways in our brain so that they can duplicate our brain. And literally, they do that in silico. And again, that's another article. that I published in Entangled magazine, in silico DNA, but they are also doing in silico modeling of the human brain. This all comes out of particle physics, folks. This is all about particle colliders, synchrotron particle accelerators, hard x-rays, looking at our DNA, looking at the proteins building the DNA, using these hard x-rays to infer their quantum construction uh, patterns, their models. They do all of this in computer software, and now they're applying that same DNA process to the minds in order to, down at that you know, tubulin dimer level, be able to model exactly the electrical pathways, the electron flow within our human brains, from neuron to neuron, across synapse connections, all of those things across the dendrites, Everything is being modeled biologically.